everyone. This is uh, Mir Musa. I am uh, recapping my talk from Sunday, August 28th, 2022, uh, about well, my book, Insightful, which is right here. And uh, I'm going to read the preface, parcel with my preface, and from chapter five, the truth about impermanence, and chapter eight, clarity about intentions. I wrote this book to share my personal experience and insights that were gained from meditation practice. I was born in Bangladesh into a Muslim family and raised to practice Islam. By the age of 20, 38, I realized I did not find the practice useful for my spiritual growth. Being the youngest of five children in a religious household, I was told to follow the lead of my older siblings and the belief system of elder family members. Me being gay and not being respected for my way of being caused a lot of friction with my family due to their desire for me to join in their religious practice while I tried to create a joyful life for myself. I know in order to find happiness, I had to make the difficult choice to re leave the religion and cultivate a deeper love for myself. I stopped all religious practice for a while, but did not like that choice either. I felt there was something missing in my life. I realized I needed to do something different. Though I did not know what it would be, after years of soul searching, I took a leap of faith by choosing an unknown path. Now looking back, I appreciate what a courageous and beautiful choice it was. When I stumbled upon meditation practice in 2010, it felt like a divine gift graciously given to me from the universe. Meditation spoke to me since I was able to witness tangible results from the get-go. I have been practicing daily meditation for more than a decade. I have selected 10 insights that are transforming my psyche with notable changes to improve my way of being. By sharing my discoveries, I hope to help anyone who is also seeking to find the truth about who they are and their relationship with the rest of the universe. I'm fortunate that I came across these practices to gain access to the inner knowledge, which is coming from a powerful and wise mind state. The truth of impermanence. One morning during a walking meditation, I had a glimpse of understanding the Buddhist teachings of impermanence. I understood what it means to recognize that everything exists in a constant state of flux. Part of the walking meditation involves focusing on my breathing as I attentively witness the length of my breath, each time it is different. Likewise, our state of mind is always changing due to our sense perceptions, and this phenomena continues throughout the day. In one instance, a new life cycle begins, and the next moment, someone is leaving the planet. Days turn to night, seasons change, the earth circles the sun, everything transforms. The law of the universe is change. Therefore, we are part of this law. On a molecular level, we are changing and vibrating, just as the furniture or the place we live in are also changing at an atomic level. Most of us cannot detect these changes. Although 
as our meditation practice progresses, we can sense, feel, and understand these changes more vividly. We witness through our everyday living that these transformational phenomena are true. In some ways, we delude ourselves into thinking that we live in a state of permanence. The reality is we are in a constant state of flux. What is meant to change cannot be stopped. Therefore, any moment we try to avoid change, we delay our own progress and hold on to suffering we experience. An easy solution is to let go. When a different circumstances appears in our lives due to the law of cause and effect, we can choose to engage with it with an economist mind state or ignore it, if at all possible. It is up to us to decide if we would like to take part in the game of life. The universe presents us with situations that can teach us lessons so we can develop skills to move up to higher levels of consciousness as we learn the lesson from each experience. The way to progress is when we look at a circumstance for what it is and without labeling it as good or bad, we engage with it. With radical acceptance to a circumstance, we can witness that event transform and become something else. If we can develop mindfulness toward any circumstance and see it for what it is, we can align our mind with clearly seeing that the only constant is change. Knowing and understanding this truth, we can recognize that there is no permanent self that exists on its own. It is all temporary and impermanent. In my heart, I feel that understanding these truths frees me from fearing changes I experience as I get older. Every day, changes happen in our li living situations, at work or our relationships. By staying open and curious to whatever the changes bring, and by viewing the unfolding phenomena as a learning experience, we can make space for grace to enter into our lives and live a life complemented with mindfulness and peace. Now I'll read the last part of this talk. Uh, chapter 8, Clarity About Intention. In April 2019, I attended my first 10-day silent retreat. It was at the Dharma Treasure Meditation Center based in Kochi Stronghold in Tucson, Arizona. On a beautiful evening during the eighth day of my retreat, I was practicing walking meditation on the porch, on the porch outside the dining hall area. I was meditating on my own and walking very slowly with greater attention and awareness towards each step of I was taking. I lifted one foot knowing I was lifting my foot and placing it down slowly and gently and feeling the sensations when the feet touched the surface of the flat, slated ground. As I continued to lift my foot off the ground and move forward to make the next step, it dawned on me that before taking each step forward, I had an intention to move my feet forward. Without the intention to move, I would have just stood there. Knowing there is an intention behind each step also gave me the clarity that anything we do in life, we set an intention before taking that action. A lot of times, we are moving in autopilot and not noticing the intention behind our habitual actions. When we can be aware of our intentions, 
behind each action, we can be more conscious about our actions. This way, we can take these actions with wise intentions to help us get the most out of our life. My earlier intention to meditate was to have a greater focus in order to have fewer distractions by thoughts and letting them go. That intention led me to learn how to meditate and train my mind systems to do as I intended, rather than following whatever the mind projects in consciousness. My greater intention to meditate is to become a fully awakened being, serving mankind as I continue to learn how to become free from anger, hatred, greed, and delusions. Everything starts with an intention, and as we practice, this becomes our second nature. Discovering this insight gives me greater faith that with wholesome intentions and continued practice, I will succeed in all my intentions. As I preserve and become better at staying focused and aware, I will get things done much faster with less effort. I remember a Taoist quote from Lao Tzu. Says, though one may conquer a thousand times a thousand men in battle, yet he indeed is the noblest victor who conquers himself. Self conquest is far better than the conquest of others. Not even a god, an angel, Mara, or Brahma can turn into defeat the victory of a person who is self-subdued and ever restrained in conduct. Recalling this quote is helpful whenever I may feel unsure about why I continue my practice each day. It is to train the mind system to stay on track towards what is most important and worth investing my energy towards. This is all, all I wanted to share. Uh, thank you for listening.